Welcome back to Glamour Unfiltered, hosted by me, Josh Smith. And today we're joined by the queen of sex education, Emma Mackey. How are you? I am great. Glorious. I'm feeling glorious. Glorious, darling. <laughs> Season two, mm. you're back. I'm back. Blessed be. We're back in business. Maeve is back in our yeah. lives. Because she's very like outspoken and she wants her voice to be heard, yeah. doesn't she? She does. Well, what I did was, before I came and met you today, yeah. I dug up the interview we did the first time. <gasps> and I read did it. You? And you said this thing, which I loved, which is oh, the one God. thing I want to change about sexual education in school, is it's actually fundamentally about pleasure. We're often taught in school that sex is just uh, reproduction and women are baby making machines. Am I wrong? <laughs> she is not wrong. Still completely agree with past me, well done. Yes, past you is <laughs> on it. She's got the placard, ow. Uh, the way we're going to bring down the patriarchal system is with sex education. Now I wondered what your opinion was on that comment mm. and how that's changed over the last year. Not even, not just female pleasure, we're not talking about gay sex. We're not, we're not teaching people how to protect themselves or save, and without it being a, a reproduction thing. Mm. You're gonna get pregnant. Yeah if you don't use a condom. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so much more layered than that and it doesn't have to be all scary and mysterious mm. and like, oh, Hollywood sex. We're all here because of it. I know mm. that's a really key, like, it's redundant in a way because we say it so much, but we're all here because of sex. Yeah. So just get over it and talk about it. And I know it's not comfortable for everyone and I know there's a million, like, you know, religion and, and tradition and, and, you know, shyness. Mm. You know, there are so many things that come in kind of hinder that discussion from hinder that discussion. Um, so I think that yeah, our show really is a is a tool. It can be a tool. And mm. I still completely agree. I think yeah, I loved that when I dug it up. I was, I was like, so spoken. This show broke so many different taboos mm. in so many different ways. When you were growing up, what taboo this show breaks would have helped you the most? Just the tab the taboo of women of girls being horny. Yeah. And wanting to have sex and it not being like Oh, she's a freaking nympho. I'm like, what? Like, she just wants to have, do you know what I mean? Like, it's how it's like dirty. And I'm not generalizing, I'm talking about my experience, I'm, I'm not talking about everyone mm -hmm. else. But the boys at my school were, talk, were, were actively talking about porn and like wanking, and it was fine. And I just got so embarrassed. I remember getting red in the face, being like, oh my God, how are they doing that? So embarrassing. When obviously, like, everyone's doing it. Yeah. But it's just that there is such a, there's like this weight on girls. It's like, you can't talk about it, do you know what mm. I mean? Because it's dirty. And now I feel like everyone's talking about it and it's really cool. And everyone's yeah. like, yeah, masturbation for the nation. <laughs> masturbation for the <laughs> do you know nation. What I mean? Get that other t shirt. I'm sorry, home. I need to stop. <laughs> I need to stop. <laughs> it's terrible. What's your own journey with your having, like, representing your inner voice and making sure your inner voice is heard? What's, how's that changed as you've gone through your life, do you think? It's changed quite drastically. I feel like, again, this, this job specifically has been quite a catalyst. Is that mm -hmm. the right word? I'm yeah, using big, big words word. I don't understand. Ooh, get the dictionary out, <laughs> <It's kids. laughs> um, Has been quite a turning point, anyway, yeah. for me, because when I look back on my life, I think that, that the inner voice being heard or like speaking up for myself has come from other people believing in me mm. and giving me a leg up, so to speak, and kind of like, ensuring that I'm confident within myself because they've shown confidence in me. So that's always, that's always been a really big help for me and has boosted me. So I rely or have relied quite heavily on other people in the past and now because of this job and because I'm sort of figuring out things on my own, I've become more sort of independent and know when to speak up for myself, mm. which is cool and quite empowering. Is there a moment you can remember sitting there thinking, shall I say this, shall I not, shall I say this, shall I not, and you've done it? and you were proud, proud of yourself. It would have been, yeah, just simple things, even around the table with my brothers, or like when, when my brothers were at an age where they loved to poke me and just say all the wrong things. Yeah. I'd just be like, you need, I'm gonna educate you. <laughs> Sit down and listen to what I have to yes. say. Just like little things like that, even at, mm. at home, you kind of, you find strength in, in, in those moments and when you can speak up for yourself and speak up for what you believe in, whatever that is, mm. whatever that is, it can be something tiny, but I think that you kind of build up your confidence over time and it doesn't come straight away. It's not an easy thing, do you know what I mean? You're not supposed to just have it all there. It takes time. Because also these characters are on this amazing journey of self-discovery. Yeah. And they start to tap into parts of themselves that they didn't really tap into before and they become better people, they mm. become more well-formed, they have better understandings of the, themselves. What has your own journey been like with self-discovery. It's it's taken time. I mean, I'm only 23, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. not, it's not like you don't just get a not degree in, you don't get a degree in self-discovery and you're boom, you're off. I'm very lucky to be surrounded by people who um, have my best interests at heart and who 
and vice versa, you know, mm. people I really care about who kind of, I think you need to surround yourself with people who give off a good energy and who don't feed off you, do you yes. know what I mean? So I think that when once you learn that and once you learn how to filter out those nasty people, mm -hmm. you become stronger and, and, you, and you know what makes you tick and what works for you. Mm. And that's not being selfish in a negative way, that's just looking out for yourself. Oh, it's quite philosophical this, isn't yep, it? It is, babe. It's getting a bit deep, It's getting a bit deep, <laughs> Especially with this job, which can, which is still so new to me and still kind of sometimes can be a bit like overwhelming and surreal. I think it's really important to have a really simple life. And like the happiest time is when I'm in my little flat and with my music and my plants and cooking, or whatever, whatever it is, the really simple things, I think that's when I feel kind of leveled mm. and balanced. Because I guess like I met you a year ago, literally, yeah. I was thinking about this. Yeah. I met you a year ago where literally you you guys were ungoogleable. Ungoogleable? Ungoogleable. Ungoogleable. <laughs> ungoogleable. We were ungoogleable. Like, ungoogleable. And you were go already going on this journey, you didn't know where it was going to end up mm. and everyone was hyping it up and then it came out in January mm. and then your life literally just went like that mm. overnight. Yeah. How did you deal with that change? Because I guess it was such a shock in so many ways as well. I still don't think I have the distance from it. I feel like it's mm. all been a bit whirlwindy. Because it's such a solid group, the actors, I mean, and because we were so well looked after mm -hmm. by the crew and production and everything, I feel like the founda our foundation is really solid and good and healthy. And so that's been our starting point. This show has been our starting point. So we, we're kind of growing up together and that has enabled us to stay grounded mm -hmm. and level-headed because we know we're all in this together. What's this taught you, this job about sisterhood? Because there's such a strong sisterhood yeah. that goes on on this show. <clears throat> yeah, What's massively. it taught you about that and the power of girl power how Yeah, I mean, how important it is. I feel like there's, there are, it's not a new thing, but I feel like certainly this generation and the and shows and the plays and the, the, the things that are coming out of our generation are so brilliant and like exciting and it feels like there's a real movement happening. Mm. And I know everyone always talks about it, but it is, it's really happening and there's something, it's not like it hasn't happened before, it's like what they call this a third wave of feminism or whatever. Yeah. Like it's not, feminism is a new thing. Yeah. It's just that people are like, oh yeah, common sense. Mm. Feminism is common sense. And I'm like, oh, it's funny that, isn't it? So it's just like, it's just people are like waking up because there's no excuse not to anymore because mm. all this information is at our fingertips. So you, your duty is to be curious and to educate yourself on things like feminism and yeah. you know, whatever, and just to Im and to work together, because the world's pretty shit. Not to burst anyone's bubble, yeah. but the world is it's not, <laughs> it's, it not it's not, it's not, it's not a great not place great. at the minute, hun. A narrative arc for your character mm. is she is seen as an outsider yeah. in so many ways, and there's this whole battle at that school with popularity. What has your own relationship been like with popularity? And if you've ever felt like an outsider, how have you dealt with it? So at school, I wasn't popular. I think I wanted to be part of like the cool kids, mm. whoever they were. But I, there was no, I was lucky to be in quite a small school that was kind of quite relatively relaxed. So there was no, there was no real clique, cliquey business going on. But I was, I was always a little bit of an outsider just because I just, I just didn't really want to get involved in drama and stuff and it mm. really didn't interest me. And so um, I just read a lot of books and studied and, but that didn't make me a weirdo necessarily. I just was, I just selected my friends yeah. quite carefully, I think. So happy for you. <laughs> Thank Keep you. on saying it. <laughs> I will. You will. For you, I will. You will. Just do it for me personally, huh? <laughs> no. Not even for yourself. Why with me? Not for you. Thanks, babe. Thank you so Loved much. It. Thank you.